Hey everyone, this is Mike and you are listening to the Business Bootcamp Podcast and today we are going to be talking about how you need to be thinking about how you are going to put you out of business. Uh, I think this is a question we don't address enough, something that if you're not thinking about, someone else will put you out of business, technology will put you out of business, but if you can think about this question of what can I do to put myself out of business and then address those weaknesses and those flaws, I promise you it'll pay big dividends in the future. Before we get into today's show, a big thank you to today's sponsor, which is Gusto. Gusto Gusto.com slash bootcamp. So many of you have already started your free trial, 90 days. They are giving us, only the listeners of this podcast, uh, a complete portal where your employees and you as the employer can have access to payroll and have different ways of measuring people's time, their timesheets, making sure that all of their benefits and HR is taken care of. The onboarding process with Gusto is absolutely fantastic. Uh, Very simple to get signatures uh, signed via electronically and to make sure it's all very uh, it's all documented as far as people that have uh, made you make sure that they actually have read the employee handbook and then they've signed off on all of that and make sure they've complied with all the things that you need as far as paperwork taxes etc so check it out today go to gusto.com slash bootcamp and get that free 90 day trial. Now today, we are talking about how you need to put yourself out of business, and the reason we're talking about this is because a question came in, and it was what I was thinking about consistently throughout this entire question. So I'm gonna read this question. I might skip little parts of it, it's pretty long, but this question came in a couple weeks ago from Ray. Ray is actually up in Vancouver, British Columbia, which is literally 30, 40 minutes away from me. So Ray, if you're listening to this, I'd definitely love to uh, you know, meet up one of these days. But here we go. I'm going to read this question and we'll dig into this. So it says, hi, Mike. I've been listening to your podcast. and I've gotten to January 2018. I'll be caught up soon, but for now, I really enjoyed learning from you. I've ran my website, www.sunray.com sunraysimports.com since November 2009. It's a B2B business model as we supply retailers of all sorts who sell sunglasses. What's in it what's what it is is in need of more visitors to the site. It's so difficult to find reputable freelancers to work with. I've gone through so many over the years I can't even count. So basically uh, the conti- the question continues on and talks about how as as uh, high their their volume was as high as eight hundred thousand dollars a year before the whole online landscape changed uh, and basically they 're looking for different adwords they 're looking for ways to rank optimize their website properly, get rid of bad uh, meta titles and descriptions etc and, and, and just one of some of my thoughts on this and even though I could give some some really generic advice on how to improve their organic rankings and uh, how to improve the optimization of the website. There's something I think that is more fundamentally the issue here because I generally don't think you or anyone else that's trying to make a B2B business here is going to be able to compete with the likes of Amazon. And so that's just, you know, obviously you can create brand, but if you're doing B2B and you're selling wholesale cheap sunglasses to companies, they are completely utilitarian and they are looking for dollars versus dollars. And it's going to be very hard to compete with the likes of Amazon. So what I want to talk about is more of a macro issue with this question. And this is not just point at Ray, but just every single entrepreneur out there about thinking about how, what, who can put you out of business. And so for Ray, the likes of Amazon is what has changed, as he quoted, the the whole online landscape, how it's changed over the past 10 years. You know, Amazon is a big part of that, and free shipping is a big part of that, uh, and really the way that Amazon grew and scaled so quickly was Google AdWords, being at the top of the search rankings, et cetera, and becoming a search engine in and of itself when it comes to shopping and online e-commerce. So what I did is I went to uh, Ray's website, sunraysimports.com, sunrayzzimports.com. And on there, I'm actually looking at right now, I just started looking through the different things that he has on his website. And number one thing is, you know, great prices. uh, It's a Canadian-based company. And I'm looking at literally just some of the top sellers 
and he sells them by the dozen because they're wholesale. So they're ranging anywhere from $2 to $5, $6 per pair. And so I literally just took the, one of the first ones that popped up on the screen, which was a bamboo wood Wayfair sunglasses. They're $59 Canadian per dozen. So let's say like four, five, so five bucks Canadian. So let's say $4 US, okay? So $4 US, that's what they're selling for uh, on his website. So now this is the deal is the whole, you know, as, as Ray pointed out, the whole landscape of the internet has changed, online e-commerce, etc. So why and what is that and w where is that found? Well, I went ahead and I looked at Amazon and literally found the exact same thing. So two things I want to point out. Number one, there is a dozen of the exact same product on Amazon. And if you go ahead and search bamboo, sunglasses, Wayfair, you're going to find them almost the exact same thing. And they are only $34.95 with free shipping for Prime members. And so that is really your competition is the fact that you're selling Ray for $59 Canadian, which is like, let's say $40 US. And here on Amazon, someone can buy with free shipping two days, $34.95. So that is what is going to put you out of business is a massive conglomerate like Amazon. Now, that being said, it doesn't mean that you're going to get wiped out. It doesn't mean that you can't exist. That doesn't mean there's not any sort of a niche for you to carve out. That being said, you look back, if you search that on Amazon, you can find these same glasses and they're selling every day for eight to nine dollars per pair direct to consumer. So no longer in the, sh in, in the form of dozens of, of, uh, of glasses, but they are literally selling everywhere from $8 to $15. I'm looking right now at the exact same pair, but selling them individually direct to consumer. So perhaps this is when you do go on Amazon instead of trying to sell from your own website, tap into their massive amount of customer base and really just focus on creating optimization of your listings, keywords, etc. within Amazon. Like if you can't beat them, Try to use their their platform and the base of customers that they have and try to create your business off of that. Uh, I think that this could be a possibility where, Ray, you, uh, you know, change business models. Instead of going wholesale, which is a volume-based business, and going B2B, why not switch to a B2C where you are selling on Amazon and on these larger websites, eBay, etc. And instead of, instead of selling for 4 or $5 per pair in the case of dozens, why not sell them for eight, ten, twelve dollars per pair? Uh, but individually, at first, this is going to be a cut in your business. You're not going to see because you're not going to be high ranking in Amazon. But if you can work on that, there's a very good possibility that you make it at the top of Wayfair sunglasses in Amazon. And before you know it, you're selling hundreds of pairs a month of a certain type because you worked on SEO, you worked on search engine optimization and keywords. And this is a place, this is what you need to be asking yourself. What is going to put you out of business? Who is going to put you out of business? Is technology going to put you out of business? Is a massive competitor going to put you out of business? Is Amazon going to come in and do something and change the game for your industry and put you out of business? If you ask yourself that question and then respond accordingly now, it will prevent it from being the future of your business to be the demise as Ray has seen in the past 10 years, his business declining online, sun, uh, sunglasses sales being declining. I guarantee you it's because people are going to the likes of Amazon and buying these $10 pair type sunglasses and are not willing to uh, buy cases of 12 and the, the online retailer, well, you might say, well, okay, well, Ray is doing a B2B business. It's not, the consumer is not on Amazon. They are the, the retail shops. They are the little gift stores. Well, guess what? The gift stores do not want to be going to 50 different suppliers for every type of material or product they're selling their business. They do not want to have to go to a different website to buy their sunglasses and then a different website to buy their hats and a different website to buy their glass, uh, their, uh, uh, watches and a different website to buy uh, prescription glasses and a different website to buy t-shirts. They are looking for a one-stop shop and they're going to places like Amazon and Costco and these big stores that have all of the different 
products they need. They're looking for suppliers. They're looking for distri- distributors that are doing this for them and doing the work for them. They are not going to want to go independent websites. That is a thing of the past when it comes to these small, non, uh, non-branded non glasses, t-shirts, etc. Now, I'm not trying to bash Ray. I'm just trying to point out the fact that this is the time to pivot and look at where the the landscape of the webs of online e-commerce is going. Where is it going? What's happening? Is it likely that you're going to sell non-branded uh, merchandise from an, a personalized individual website when the likes of Amazon can blast these things out, ship them faster, ship them cheaper, and store them much more efficiently than you ever could because they simply have economies of scale. So my proposition to Ray is maybe dabble in the B2C market by trying to figure out Amazon and their search engine optimization instead of trying to compete with them on search ranking in Google. Like this, it just, the amount of resources they have and other online, like Ray-Bans and all these other companies that have massive brands that are spending to get SEO in Google is enormous. For you to compete with them is absolutely, uh, very difficult, very, very difficult. You have to work on a brand. Well, if you're not selling brand and you're not selling a a, a branded type of product that you can create loyal followers that are going to go through the extra hassle, wait a little longer on the shipping to get your product and pay a premium price. If you're not doing that, if you're just selling commodity type products or services, you have to use these large conglomerates, Amazon and the like online to make sure you break through the noise. And so that's what I would recommend. And it's a question that everyone should be asking yourself. Who's going to put you out of business? Is Amazon? Because literally, I think most industries, if Amazon wakes up tomorrow, they could completely disrupt disrupt most industries. Like literally several months ago when they woke up and they decided that they were going to start working in the pharmaceutical prescription drug uh, fulfilling industry, like literally that day, massive amounts of cuts were in the stock market because of these pharmaceutical companies completely scared out of their mind because who knows what Amazon could do? Who knows if they can make an online thing for prescription drugs and have them shipped to people within two days for prime members? Like, this is the this is what changes industries and this is the problem the prescription drug company the 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 pharmaceutical company that's been making billions of dollars over the past 10 15 years they're the ones that should have made the platform online for the the for the prescriptions to be filled and delivered in the next day and made all super convenient and gone way leagues ahead of Amazon. Like they had they had a grasp on the market with the pharmaceutical industry before Amazon even was profitable like 10 15 years ago. Like Amazon wasn't even profitable and here these pharmaceutical companies are raking in billions of profit and yet they are behind the times because they are not constantly asking themselves the question who is going to put me out of business? And if you ask yourself that question consistently, you'll stay ahead of the, t- the trend of technology that is wiping out businesses, wiping out industries, taking out small businesses, and pushing it towards large online e- e-commerce and conglomerates. Apple, Googles, the Facebooks, and the Amazons of the world are the companies that you are going to be competing with as a small business owner. So you say, well, I don't know if that's really true. I'm just a little retailer. I do little, like I'm a little sub shop or I'm a, a little these services. I'm a little contract. Like I'm not competing with these massive tech companies. Let me inform you that that is very incorrect in the fact that this, let me, I do landscaping and I think about this all the time. What happens if Amazon tomorrow offers a $10 per month subscription service for a robot to come and mow all the prime members' locations, houses? Like literally, a drone shows up, drops a little robot off in their lawn, and for 10 bucks a month, that little robot mows their lawn. And what happens to me who has been charging 300 bucks a month to mow that same lawn? All of a sudden, you become absolutely obliterated by technology and by a company that's constantly thinking about the the next technology that can wipe out the competition. And so then you ask yourself, well, what can I do to prevent that from happening? Like that's not probably going to happen anytime in the next couple months. There's not like a drone is not going to be delivering the 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 robot anytime soon. Robot technology for mowers is not to the point of being able to do edging and the fine tuning of blowing and all those other things. 
Like, it's not there yet, but it's coming. Robot technology is definitely on the increase within our industry. It's going to happen. GPS technology, mapping technology. Right now, you have to put in the little wire on the perimeter of your lawn to keep the robot enclosed and so it knows where it's at. That's going to change. That's going to change. Uh, when the mapping gets better, the GPS stuff gets better, the, the robots get better at mapping and memory. Like It's going to change. And in 10 years, 15 years, that might be a very legitimate concern that Amazon can come in or Home Depot. Lowe's is already trying to, starting to play with this. A big home improvement store coming in and saying, hey, we want to take ownership of, number one, the outdoors, and then the indoors cleaning. There's already robots for that. They want to take ownership of that in the marketplace and in the mind of the consumer. And in order to do that, they can forego billions of dollars and lose a ton of money up front in order to gain market share. And when they're doing it, they're going to eat into people like me in my little small business that cannot compete and lose the money up front. And so I'd constantly, regardless of what industry you're in, be thinking about this. What is going to put you out of business? Is technology? Is a big competitor? Is Amazon going to do it? Like, so with our, our, our company, Augusta Lawn Care for landscaping, now we're starting to install artificial turf. We're thinking about, okay, with regulations and with the, the laws that are being placed on water restrictions, they are not going to get any better. It's, it's, it's going to continue to get worse. It's going to get hotter in the summers. People are going to consistently be trying to conserve more water. It's going to become regulated. It's going to become the more and more laws are going to become around it. And so what can we do to make sure we're ahead of that curve? If we don't want to be depending on mowing year round, if mowing dries up because simply the grass is not growing and people cannot water their lawn, uh, is irrigation something to be getting into this time of year? or this time of the season of the economic climate when there's a good possibility that water might, the price of water might be going like crazy in our area or the fact that there might be restrictions that actually limit the allowed amount of water that might be an actual cap on it per household. Or do you think about what's going to put you out of business? And so what would put us out of business is people taking out their lawns. Well, instead of trying to buck against that trend or turn a blind eye to it or hope it doesn't happen in the next generation, what we've done is we've started to tear out lawns and put in artificial turf, put in putting greens, artificial stuff that doesn't need water, doesn't need maintenance. It doesn't need to, we don't need to mow it. We don't need to fertilize it. We don't need to edge it. We don't need to blow it. And so for some people you'd say, literally you're taking out the lawns that you would usually be mowing and servicing on a weekly basis. And I turn around and say, absolutely. I'd much rather put myself out of business and make money putting in artificial turf than someone else to come along in 10 years and completely obliterate my business because they come in and they figured out artificial artificial turf and they figured out that lawns need to come out and people can conserve money and time and energy and water and be more efficient and more economical and they come in and they wipe my business out. You want to put yourself out of business? You don't want someone else to do it for you. You can make a lot of money by becoming the person that puts yourself out of business all the time and is on the cutting edge of technology and is constantly thinking forward and ahead of the game, ahead of your industry, ahead of your competitors. You can make a lot of money putting yourself out of business. I promise you, you will lose a lot of money by letting someone else put you out of business. It'll hurt. It'll be a pain. It'll be a painful experience and you will lose market share if you allow and you sit back on your laurels and allow someone else to be, because I, I promise you, Amazon, Apple, the Googles, the Facebook, they are constantly thinking, how do we put other people out of business? How do we consistently change and revolutionize industries to put other companies out of business. They're not necessarily trying to put other companies out of business as much as take their market share and take the revenue and get closer to the consumer. And they are proving that they can do that very efficiently, very effectively. And they're willing to forego billions of dollars because they have it in reserves in order to get market share. And us as small business owners have to be on the cutting edge. We have to be thinking ahead of what is going to put us out of business and then do those things. If Amazon's going to come along with robots and start putting people out of business, I want to be in the in the robot game, at least playing with it, at least knowing how it works so that when they come along, I can compete. I can be ahead of them and have differentiation to the customer. So that's how I've been thinking about with my landscaping business. With Anytime Fitness, the gym that I own, uh, you know, what is it going to what is going to put us out of business what has been the traditional for the past 15 years of anytime fitness and the 24 hour type of gyms is 
convenience. It's convenient. It's cheap. You can come 24 seven. You have key card access. You can get it anytime, any day. It's very, very convenient. But what is going to put us out of business? It's going to be the company. It's going to be the gym that is not only convenient, but has training and gets closer to the consumer. They start to have personal training. They have live programming. They have ways of tracking heart and uh, muscular density and bone density and having ways to really uh, really communicate the health and wellness and the fitness levels to their members in a much more efficient manner using technology, using technology to get closer to their members on a day-to-day basis. Not what just when they come in the gym, but when they're at home, when they're eating, when they're on the go, when they're driving, whether it be through Fitbit, whether it be through their watch, whether it be through the music they're listening to, whether it be through an app, whether it be through some way of seamlessly integrating their calories intake with their fitness tracking. Like these are ways that a gym has to start thinking ahead of the game. And that's why I'm willing to forego the dollars right now and tra- have trainers that uh, are still filling their schedule and we're losing money on trainers. But I know that the long term game of having trainers and becoming a training club instead of just a convenience club is super important. Why? Because I'm constantly asking myself the question, what happens if someone, another gym moves next door? Who, what are they going to be able to do to put me out of business? And if I, I found the, the weakness with the club was there's not very good training programs. There's not clear, concise uh, pricing for training. It's not a training club. It's a convenience club. And convenience will work so long until until a massive big box store or a massive big box gym like an LA Fitness or a Planet Fitness comes along and puts us out of business because they're cheaper, they're more convenient, they have more amenities, they have more programs to offer. And so how can you differentiate yourself and how can you make sure that you are in a place that protects yourself from the competition coming in and wiping you out. You know, that's, that's you know, and I talked about Augusta and the artificial turf. I talked about Anytime Fitness having more of a training atmosphere instead of just convenience only because that's easily duplicatable by our competitors. Well, even the online course that I've created, landscapebusinesscourse.com, you say, well, how do you differentiate yourself? What's the thing that's going to wipe you out? I'll tell you what's going to wipe me out is people putting free content because there's tons of information online. There's tons of information on YouTube and Facebook, tons of free information. In theory, what would m- knock out the course that people pay me for is that there's a ton of free content around the same subject matter. Now, what do you do? What do I constantly think about What's going to put me out of business? Free content. Okay, how do I differentiate myself from free content? I make content that no one else would want anyone else to talk about in their business. So I show numbers. I show the behind the scenes of our business, things that no other landscaping company would share because their competitors would see it or so-and-so. They would never put it on YouTube or Facebook or a free public domain. And so I make sure that I have exclusive content that's sensitive that no one else would share on those other platforms and then that's why I'm able to charge dollars for that course. I'm able to share things that they can't see online, they cannot see for free because no one else wants to share this information and no one else wants to show the behind the scenes of their business or show how much money they made or show their pricing structure. Like No one in the landscaping industry is sharing their pricing sheet and what they're p- charging per hour and that's what we do on, the, on landscapebusinesscourse.com and that's why it continues to sell even though there's more and more content every single day for free around the same subject matter, you've I've created a niche. And it, I would promise you, if you're trying to create a course or a podcast, create a niche, something that people are willing to pay for that no one else is willing to offer. If you can come up with that recipe, you'll be successful. And I constantly, I constantly would ask you to ask yourself this question. Ask yourself this question every single day, every single week, at least once a month. What is going to put my business out of business? What is going to put me and my company out of business? Who is going to put me out of business? What technology can wipe me out? And then don't run from it. Don't turn a blind eye to it. That's why people have gotten wiped out. This is why companies like uh, Ray's has suffered online. They turn a blind eye to it. Ten years later, they wake up and they realize Amazon's completely obliterated the e-commerce websites of their industry. And they, I promise you, this is what this is what's going to happen if you don't. I don't care if you're an online, if you're selling services, products, if you're a small town, big town, uh, 
10 employees, 100 employees, two employees, this is what you have to be thinking about. Because if you don't, in 10 years, you will be out of business and it will be because someone else put you out of business instead of you putting yourself out of business. I'd ask yourself the question, how can you put yourself out of business and then go do that thing? For us, we mow lawns. How do we? How would we put ourselves out of business? We take all the lawns away. So what are we doing? We're taking the lawns away, we're installing artificial turf, and we're trying to make money off of it. And when it comes to the gym, what are we trying to do? We are trying to create a training training atmosphere, which is the exact same thing that would obliterate our convenience model. We're trying to do the opposite. We're trying to put ourselves out of business. What am I doing with the course? I'm trying to make people pay for something by giving them something exclusive that they cannot get anywhere else. And I'm trying to get away from the content that could be out there free online on, on YouTube and Facebook. Everyone else can watch the videos, but no one else is going to show this content. I'm trying to put myself out of business by creating free content. I don't know if people have been paying attention, but I've been paying, putting out a huge amount of free content around landscapebusinesscourse.com. Much more free content than even this paid exclusive stuff that only members can see. You, some people say, why are you doing that? I'm trying to put myself out of business. I'm trying to give away so much content for free on YouTube and Facebook that people will come and tr- they are more than happy, more than willing to pay. I'm creating a brand that they will come and pay for because they know that the, the exclusive of stuff that I can't show in a public domain is well worth the money. And so I promise you if you if you can create a brand that is constantly thinking about what is going to put me out of business and don't run from it. Do not run from that thing. Embrace it. Go do it. And I promise you, go pay dividends down the road. Again, thank you so much everyone. This is Mike Andes. You've been listening to Business Bootcamp podcast. Until next time, be great. As nothing else pays.